Mm -hmm. She was I don't care what you say. When they almost died on that table, that was the hand of Christ that woke me up. I saw a light and Christ said, hello. Mm -hmm. It ain't time for you yet. You got more work to do. Do we know that Yahweh also deals with them? That he, he creates these entities. They're spirits that are deceitful spirits. They're created just to deceive us. But we're going to see that. And then it says here, we, we're going to overlook the fact that he said, pass this cup for me. Because mm -hmm. tomorrow we're still going to sing to him. And then it says in verse 40, and he cometh unto the disciples and fighteth them asleep and saith unto, unto Peter, what? You couldn't watch me for an hour? <laughs> I mean, just an hour? Then he said, watch and pray that he enter not into temptation. Now this is the same man that's cursing a fig tree and didn't know that it was out of season. He stomps it and curses it. Man, no fig, of course no fig is gonna grow from it. You destroyed it. But this is God. This is who we worship. Cursing fig trees. Don't want to face up to his responsibility. Yeah. It sounds like a deadbeat man to me. Huh. Then he says here, and he went away again the second time and prayed. He didn't say it the first, just the first time. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> when you pray, and you pray in the same prayer, oh, you serious. Oh, you for real. <laughs> like, this ain't no joke. Uh -huh. It just got real. It's getting down to that time. I'm for real, y'all, or oh, Father. Father, if this cup may pass away mm -hmm. from me, Except I drink it, thy will be done. Mm -hmm. And then in verse 44 it says, no, verse 43 it says, And he came and found them asleep again. <laughs> for their eyes were heavy. And he said, you know what? Forget it. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm through. Then he says <laughs> here, and he left them. I think, you know, at this point he's like, you know, you ain't going to stay up with me and watch me. Uh -huh. Like he a baby. That's what you do to kids. I'm a grown man. This is a grown man getting mad because other grown men are sleepy. You ain't gonna sit up and watch me. Watch you do what? I can't save you, Christ. All right. So this says here, and he left them and went away again and prayed the third time. Mm -hmm. Listen now, saying the same words. Mm -hmm. Does that sound like a God that wanted to die for your sin? Mm. Or an individual that was, where we ain't talking about a Moses who stepped up to the plate. Yeah. We're talking about a man who was given this deified position, telling the world that, yeah, I talked to the Most High, and yeah, I told him I don't want to die for your sins. Now let's look at another chapter. Let's go to Mark 14. Mark chapter 14. We're starting at the 22nd verse, and I'm going to stop for the, in a few minutes before any questions are coming. <coughs> That's Mark 14, and I'm going to start at the 22nd verse. Now, this is supposed to have been before he was put in prison. This is considered what they call the Last Supper. But it really wasn't the Last Supper because after the crucifixion, he was with his boy and he ate fish. <laughs> yeah, also, so that really wasn't even the Last Supper. But in verse 22 it says, And as they did eat, J.C. took bread and blessed and break it and gave to them and said, Take, eat this, my body. Verse 23, and he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them. And they all drank of it. And he said unto them, 
This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many. Welcome to communion. Now, this shows me that if this is God, he went back on his commandment of that us not consuming any matter of blood. Right. But some may say he didn't drink blood. He didn't drink it. They didn't drink blood. It was just a representation. <laughs> well, let's talk about representation. All right? Would the Almighty think it's okay for a man to act like he's gay? Or act like a woman? Is it okay for a man or woman to imitate any type of wickedness? <clears throat> mm -hmm. okay. Is that okay? But obviously, this guy felt it okay to take into a barbaric, oh, this is a barbaric, cannibalistic. Mm -hmm. Diet. Blood. You know, there are people to this day that believe themselves to be vampires. Yep. They get their teeth filed down, the canines. They get them filed down sharp, and they bite each other. Now, they have people that they, they have parties. And they have people that they hire to be, I guess they consider donors. Well, all they do at the party is they come and get bit all night long. Sometimes people come. There's even retreats set up for that, where if you want some blood, you got the donor, you bring the donor, you come into this room like a doctor's room where you get examined and you just bite and you suck the blood from the donor. like vampirism or something they call it. It's something more technical. That's basically what it is. And then they had these parties where, they, where you got some that actually believe they're vampires. And they'll tell you that I can't, I don't have energy unless I drink blood. Animals. Well, thanks Christianity for okaying that. Because mm -hmm. what can a Christian say against a vampire who mm -hmm. want to be a vampire? What can they say? That's evil to drink blood. Where your book say that at? Here, let me show you something right here. He wanted you to mimic you with drinking blood. What's worse, actually doing it or pretending? A righteous man say both is wicked. A wicked person would say it's choosing the, the, the best between the two evils. Why when we go both? He's the best one out of the both is wicked. They both wicked, but he's the best wicked. I mean, the best one. He got a little goodness in him. He waves at the little black kid he is, he touch him. And don't shake his hand off after he touch a little black child. Oh, he, he's something else, he's true. And that's what we've come to. Now let's look at one more place. Let's go to the book of Luke. The book of Luke. <coughs> Chapter 22. And I want to kind of engrave this in our heads. Luke chapter 22. I'm going to start at verse number 40. He says, This is Christ speaking. He says, and when he was at the place, he said unto them, pray that ye enter not into temptation. And he said to the disciples, this is the same as what we read in the book of Matthew, chapter 26. This is Luke's interpretation of what happened. Verse 41 says, and he was withdrawn from them about a stone's distance. Now that's pretty far. Hmm and kneel down and pray, saying, Father, 
if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Sort of like, remove this cup from me. Get me out this position, not because I asked you, but do it because you want to do it, so that it makes me look good. <laughs> you know how you say, hey, cook this cake for me. Don't tell them that you cooked it, because I want to take the credit. Don't tell them that you say because you want to, though. Verse 43 says, and there appeared, now does a God need this? Hmm. Verse 43 says, and there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. Oh, no. hmm. So my God needs to be strengthened? The creator of strength. Uh -huh. The embodiment of strength. Needed one of his hosts to come down and comfort him. Like, God, it's okay. Mm -hmm. It's all right, God. It's okay. 44. It says here, And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. Mm -hmm. And his sweat was as it were great drops of blood falling down to the ground. And there are many reasons why a person would sweat. You're over anxious, fearful, or you're overexerting. You're exerting something. This man feared. God showed fear. <laughs> Christ of the New Testament showed fear. He showed fear. Sweating. Like blood drops. You know how much he was sweating? And then the question still don't ask, Pastor, who is he praying to? Pastor, show me who this is that he is praying to. Now, let's get out of this book, and let's talk, and I'm going to go over a few scriptures, and then I'm going to open it up for questions or comments. Let's turn to the book of Exodus, chapter 6. We're going to deal with redemption. And when I study redemption, Yahweh don't need help. Hmm. When you study why he sent saviors in the form of the prophets, when he sent them, he told us. We told him. When we told Moses, I don't want Yahweh to communicate with mm -hmm. me. Let him talk through you. So Yahweh sends prophets to communicate to the people. He sent saviors not to die for the people's sins, but to make them return back to him. Exodus chapter 6, verse 6 says, Wherefore saith unto the children of Israel, I am Yah, and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians, and I will rid you out of their bondage. And I will redeem you. Redeem means rescue. Rescue, save you. With a stressed out arm and with great judgment. This is what he told our forefathers when we were in captivity in Egypt. He said, I'm going to rescue you. And guess what? Yahweh didn't have to lift one sword to save his people. Yahweh is so great, he used the elements to destroy a nation. Let me tell you how great Egypt was. Egypt at that time had found a way to get electricity yep. to light the cities in Egypt. You know what they did? They built pyramids these pyramids, they used 
granite style tile which acts as a conductor and the water would run and they would generate the electricity and it would flow through the cities to life. Egypt was not a primitive like you see in the movies mm -hmm. with the, the thing and the fire and all that. No, these the Egyptians, Yahweh gave them great knowledge. And yes, they were black. Not white European plain Egyptians. They were black. And Yahweh said, and I'm going to save you with a stressed out arm. Now let's go to Isaiah 44. And this will be the last scripture that I'll use. And then I'll open it up for comments or questions. <coughs> this is one of my favorite verses. One of my many favorites. This is a verse of hope. A verse of strength. To me. Now let's go to the book of Isaiah, chapter 44. I'm going to start at the 21st verse. It reads, Remember these, O Yaakov and Israel, for thou art my servant. I have formed thee. Thou art my servant. He repeats it again. You my servant. You're my servant. And then he says, O oh Israel, thou shalt not be forgotten of me. So when we hear in all this spiritual Israel and all this that now we're under a new dispensation because Christ died for us on Calvary and, and now we got all these new fangled things. <clears throat> Yahweh said, I ain't forgot you. why you're not going all the way consumed. Because once I forget you, Israel, you destroy it. Because then that means I'm not with you. But this right here, you online, me standing here ministering, Yah's word is an example that Yah is still with us. Amen. This is an example where there are Knessas that teach Yah's word. He is still with us. We are still his people. Verse 22. This is hope. It says, I have blotted out mm -hmm. as a thick cloud thy transgression. And as a cloud, I blotted out thy sins. Turn unto me. Now these things are done and he's saying return which means that in the midst of us still sinning mm -hmm. he's saying just return to me I blotted them out just return to me for I have saved you Hallelujah. for I have redeemed thee Hallelujah. all you gotta do is return to me. Hallelujah. 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 Now, let me say this too. And then I'm going to open it up for, we got some, a few minutes to open up any comments, questions, or anything like that. <clears throat> let me say this. That Knowing Yahweh has been one of the greatest blessings that I've ever received. Being amongst my brothers, my sisters, the elders, I'm blessed to sit up under some of the greatest teachers. <clears throat> 
And I've heard a lot of teachers. And there are times that eye to eye is not going to be seen all the time. But the one thing that we have to realize is it's okay to be disagreeable without hating each other. You have some teachers that don't like to be questioned for whatever reason. But unless things are challenged, unless things are questioned, how do you learn? Does that mean that this person's way is right and this person's way is not right? No, it doesn't. But what does matter is how we are to receive that wisdom. <coughs> We are to receive that wisdom. Thank you, Elder, for correcting me on that count. <clears throat> because I'm pretty sure that a lot of people, like, wait a minute, if you count the 15th, I'm getting eight days from that. But let me tell you, it takes a lot of practicing to be humble. To admit. Because one thing that I've noticed and seen, not here, is that you will get argued, mm -hmm. you will get ridiculed, and you'll be right. You'll be right. What I had to learn was that when teaching the Almighty Word, that's why I'm so open to so many different aspects of, learn, of understanding the scripture. Because what I had to learn was, this job is very serious. Very serious. And if there's anything that's told that's an error, that's a problem. That's a problem. So, with that being said, we have a few minutes. I'm opening up the floor to any questions or comments, testimonies. Um, it's 423 right now. Um, about eight, we got about eight minutes that we can open the floor to any comments, testimonies. If there are still any comments that want to be made about my um, the lesson that I taught on earlier with the bathing and uncleanliness, uh, please make them. Yes. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I just have a, um, a comment and testimony. Well, first of all, I'd like to give our praise to the Almighty by saying hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'd like to thank the Almighty uh, for my family. Um, yesterday, um, there, my family had a, um, uh, a birthday, and it, it was my niece. It was uh, my sister-in-law's daughter, or daughter, which is my niece. And it was so good to be there. Um, my son was there. He goes to a different Knesset. Mm -hmm. My granddaughter, she was there. She goes to a different Knesset. But you know, it, it was just good because we were all together, all the children, everybody was as one. And it was just such a good feeling to be there amongst my family. And you know, hopefully uh, all of us have come together like we did yesterday. And it was just a great day, and I'd like to thank the Almighty for just being there in the corner of the family. I say, I hope you Well, let me say this that there are no comments or questions. Uh, I'll end down with comments and then I'll test myself. That I am in a room of wisdom and strength. Any elder or any anyone that if, if I was feeling weak in any way, I can pick up the phone and call anybody and get strengthened. Now let me say this about my lesson earlier in dealing with um, 
the uh, Clooney movie. As I, as I sort of stated earlier, this lesson is not over. Because there's still some other scriptures that I have to study from that are they still pretty consistent with what I was dealing with, but I'm going to look at them again. And I'm doing that because I fear Yahweh. And I have a job that he ordained me to do. But please don't think that because I choose to go back and study and meditate on things that I don't know what I'm talking about. Because the one thing that I had to study before I taught was that Proverbs 3 and 5. Trust in Yahweh with all thine heart and lean not unto your own understanding. When I teach, when I'm <clears throat> teaching this lesson that Yahweh blesses me with, any lesson that's taught, if I'm not doing it and I haven't been doing it, that's that's a conviction on me. But my job is not to mislead anyone. That's not what I do. And what, what I would like for us to understand is just because somebody might have a different insight on something don't mean that, I'm, that that person is misleading, whether it's a teacher or a, 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 a day to day. Don't think like, oh, you just miss, no. Maybe I'm just seeing it a little different because both sides can support with scripture. As long as both sides can support with scripture, you can, you can kind of discern between what's commentary and what's law. But I love the questions. I love the points that were brought out with that fact of uncleanliness. Um, please do consider the great scriptures that Moray Yoel brought out, that minister brought out. Please consider them, study them, as well as I. But I thank you. It's been a blessing. We shall return back at 5 p.m., 5 o'clock. But until then, I want to say how much we appreciate you for spending your Sabbath here with the House of Yehuda. <clears throat> and if you have any questions or comments, even after I step down, please still send them through. But until 5 p.m., may y'all bless and keep us. Amen. 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 Amen.